guys the new episode of Yellowstone was on tonight season 2 episode 5 uh, touching your enemy and I um, really actually loved this episode it was so good at first I was kind of scared because I thought it was gonna be like a flashback episode because the first 10 minutes um, it showed the past where all the kids were still teenagers and it actually showed um, Rip when he was still a teenager how he became like how he came uh, to the branch uh, that actually um, sh got shown a few episodes back and this is like generally him and his uh, best uh, how they met and how their relationship progressed and uh, I kind of got scared because I thought the whole episode was going to be like that, but it wasn't. And I but you did learn a lot about their relationship. It, uh, I learned that they were their each other's like first kiss, which really probably just mean also means they were each other's first love, which I kind of like already picked up on that. And in this episode, uh, they kind of the adult it kind of came back to present times in the adult versions of Beth and Rip had a little meet up and had a little heart to heart and uh, she kind of was looking at the guy who Rip was, has been having a problem with and he was like don't waste your time like he there's nothing good in that and what she was saying she was like kind of sees like little specks of good in people and tries to steal that specks of good for herself and she went like told Rip like oh I'm so sorry I did that to you and he's like you didn't do anything to me and you could like uh, don't ever like have to say sorry to me those are two words that you, I'm sorry is two words you'll never have to say to me and just and he's like mounting up on his horse he's got the cowboy hat on and it just in that moment it was just so like just straight out of a fairy tale he would you wouldn't expect that in real life you can't because it's just it's on TV so there's no hope of something like that actually happening in real life but just the way the Sun was hitting him and everything and he was like and now I'm gonna go right off in a sunset and she's like it's a sunrise it's like you know what I mean it was a really cute moment I actually really adore those two and in the um, towards the ending um, the sheriff actually got a US, USP, um, delivery, or USPS delivery, and a box of, uh, alcohol, In the box, uh, was alcohol, and a little note with little, um, bullet, uh, in the note it says, don't forget who you're, uh, working for. And then the recap on that is, um, in the, my previous review, uh, how I was saying in the last episode, um, uh, tri uh, Casey actually got deputized to figure out who's, um, killing off of the, killing off all the herd and stuff on the whole, like, everyone's land, and, uh, the sheriff was supposed to back them up if they find something, but they didn't. And a 15-year-old boy actually ended up getting shot and killed over it. And so that's the recap. And so coming back to this episode, uh, he uh, got this letter that said, Don't forget who you're working for. And actually ended up doing an interview on TV saying, uh, like saying there is no fault to Casey or the other um, deputized uh, guy for the uh, that it was just an accident and it was completely his own fault because he didn't back him up and sorry I just heard my dog going out the door I thought someone was there and um and Jamie and Beth and John Dunn were all sitting there watching him on TV and Beth was like damn how did you get him to do that or say that 
and he was like, I, that wasn't me. He, like, and kind of recap the last episode, those two guys that was trying to, uh, get entwined with John Dunn, uh, was like, now I know how I could help John, because the, a uh, news anchor was telling, was on the news telling them how a 15-year-old boy got killed, and the next thing you know, the sheriff was doing that interview, so I'm thinking those guys sent him that package just to remind him that he works for John Dunn, and then I think that's going to play out, and he's going to figure out it was those two guys. And uh, going back to the cattle, uh, kind of like I was saying, I, I don't think it, I was saying like I don't think it was the guy who Casey and Rip like tried to hang their hang uh, off of a tree. Uh, the guy, uh, one of the city sticker guys come in and trying to redevelop the whole thing. And I think uh, just to get back to them, they were all like, oh, it had to have been him. He had to have been the one who went and poisoned all our cattle. And I always thought like it couldn't have been because that would just be way too much on the nose. And he was finally, uh, got to the house, Casey and the other, uh, Wrangler guy got to the house, and, uh, Casey started throwing him around, started wailing on him, and he's like, it wasn't me, I swear, like, how the hell do you think, like, I don't know how to poison cattle, and I wish that I did, because I could see how much pain you are in over this, and... I knew it wasn't him. It would just be too much on the nose. I personally thought, I think that it was the um, new leader of the Native American tribe, and uh, quite suspiciously, they were actually not even in the, or he was actually not even in this episode. Um, but Monica was. Monica took her class to back to the reservation to. Um, watch a race like a horse race and then the guy who's uh, helping her do her physical therapy is still like hitting on her even though she told him like basically in a professional way but still told him to back off I'm married and him, Monica and Casey actually didn't really have a um, scene together this week and in the beginning very ending of the show, um, Jamie actually did an interview about his dad telling like a pro reporter how bad his dad is of being a parent and all that. And he's been this whole episode he since he's back at the ranch and he's forgiven and all that and he's back home. Uh he's trying to cancel it and the reporter like won't uh kill the story. And she so he goes bleeding to Beth, like, help, I did something, and I did something really horrible, and she's like, what did you do? Like, w and he, you could see how, like, torn up he's over this, and he's like, oh, I didn't, it's not what, it's who, and then she just had this look, like, she knew, and she grabs him, and, like, pushes him aside, is gonna go tell her father, um, John Dunn, and she grabs it. He grabs her, pushes her against the wall, and tells her to wait. So he, she, uh, Beth knees him. And this whole time, she's like yelling at him, telling him, like, you're freaking crazy. And so she knees him in the groin to get him off her. And then so picks him up by his hair, like, throws him into her dad's um on the floor into her dad's office and he's like you tell him what you did you tell him what you did and picks him up by he's like on the floor on his knees Beth picks up Jamie by the hair and like makes him look up at his dad like that because his dad's uh just like kind of towering over him looking down on him and he's like tell him what you did tell him right now what you did and uh, the whole time he is just in pain, like emotional pain. You could tell that he's getting torn apart inside, and of guilt of what he did. And uh, John was like, "Beth, I, 
I have it from here. I have it from here. You could back off. I have it from here. And she kicks him, like, in the stomach, so he flips over on his back. And then John's like, Beth, you could leave. I said I had it from here. And he just... And then she gets right up in um, her dad's face, John's face, and it's like, you come find me after, he, don't let him Jamie his way out of this. You come find me after he tells you, and so you make sure that he tells you the truth. And then she storms out, and he's just like, what did you do to make the one person that doesn't get scared get so damn scared? And then he's just sitting there like, Jamie is on the couch and he's just like rocking back and forth and just sitting there and he's like crying and he looks up at his dad and just like melts down and looks back down again and the whole time he's uh John's just like staring down at him and he's got like a drink in his hand and then it takes a minute and he throws the glass at the fireplace like busts the glass and he's like what did you do to me and that is when the episode cut out and I was like holy crap like Beth is a total badass that's but we already knew that right and that is all I have for this episode oh no wait no oh, there's more um the boy who owed the money and I of course I can't I can never remember the his name but um tried to like do a racing to earn more money and actually ended up um losing and even owing more money to all these other guys and uh one of the guys the Wrangler guys kind of know that there's something up because uh, he did go to him and was like is there any other uh, stuff I could do to earn more money and that's the story on that because now he owes more money to other people and I feel like that is going to play out um, very violently someone's gonna find I think uh, this older Wrangler is gonna tell Rip or tell somebody and it's gonna work out fingers crossed and um, what they were doing it was racing their horses really super fast and making them um, stop by like kind of holding back like that and saying hey to their horse and whoever did it um, either faster or with the most style or I don't really know how that worked I'm not a cowgirl um, with wins and uh, when Rip was doing it total freaking badass I love that man he would even like one of the Wrangler guys was like, do you want me to hold your beer? And he's like, no, I got it. And he did the whole thing with his beer in his hand and everything. Cool moment. And anyway, that's all I have for episode five. Um, see you next week. Bye.